Good morning, dear YouTubers. I made this video last night. And I, I see that I have used a very small screen resolution of my recording device. I wanted to share, and now I want to share again what I have been doing the last about three months. During Christmas, I decided to build a small single board computer. It's a single base, a single board computer with a Z80, Z180, Z180, and um, I want to show what, or, or actually explain it and tell what it is doing. That actually, it is not doing very much, as I faced uh, a bunch of problems. <coughs> mistakes I have done. I used a ticket to to draw a, a circuit schematic. Uh, I use a, a oscillator with 40 megahertz and I was not sure when I when I put this 40 megahertz through a, a JK flip flop, then I get 20 megahertz, which is the operating frequency of the Z180 I bought. If this is not, not still too fast for for timing and on the address and data and control bus, so I try to build. A frequency divider on here, a programmable with dip switches. So I could set here a number, and this is the number which is used to divide the frequency of the oscillator. I put also a bypass jumper to bypass this complete divider and feed straightforward um, uh, the frequency towards to my JK flip-flop. Uh, I used a, a maximum level shift of a serial interface and I and one mistake and I have to think about is I wanted to to uh, to ground the serial in and the transmit in of the first transmit channel as this level shifter has two of them, two transmit channels. But somehow this thing got very hot when I powered up the circuit. So I figured out if I leave the if I leave the the pins number two and number four away from ground there is no short circuit condition again as well anymore for this level shifter so it's fine from power consumption power point of view i don't know if my logic is correct if if this input is really my 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 transmit line of the process i don't know yet but i'm far very far away to to test this I use an 138 as a 1 of 8 as se se selector to to enable peripheral devices at the I.O. memory space. Uh, I used a, a master IC in, uh, uh, in, me in memory to, to create an I2C host. And I have one I square C slave is a real time clock, which is also backed up with a battery, also a, a super cap I use on there for resetting the I square C bus. I I had an idea about to, to write to select one specific address and and write some 
values to it and my address logic would enable a, a toggle signal to the to a to 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 a RJK flip flop which would reset my host master IC. On 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 the other side I I, I use um, a gal a gal twenty two V ten for for address logic decoding and and, and control bus uh, I don't know uh, I don't know to to build chip select for the memory ICs and and to create <coughs> control lines I have three memory ICs one is an e EEPROM it, it should be programmable which is located in the lower address space. The, the Z180 is able to address one megabyte of memory. The, the first 256 kilobyte, I, I want that the EEPROM is, is acting for reading program data out. And also, when, I, when I'm good, in maybe about five years, <laughs> that I could save also in this region small programs again back in and I have two um, RAM ICs each two of uh, each 512k the first one is is sharing the the, 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 the lower capacity with the EEPROM so it's not it's not usable actually uh, the address logic on here will always uh, select the EEPROM whenever the address at address is lower than 256k everything above 256k so, so the remaining or well, the, the, the the remaining the remaining 768k are, are used as ram i see i have a power supply socket on there here this is a power supply socket of my of my Zora box on there, where the one power line is I'll put out, and this is connected to there. But I'm using only five volts and three point three volts. However, I, it is connected also minus twelve volt and plus twelve volt, but I don't need this. The I square C bus is also wired. Is also wired to, to this one here. So this is a circuit. That, diagram out of this thing I made a layout on here uh, and, and, yeah, and I wired I had issues with the um, um, given footprint after I wired it I realized that it's somehow wrong so I made an, a new PC the footprint and, and, and now this fits and it's okay I think I made a very big mistake on this PLCC socket where the EEPROM is connected into. I wired it completely wrong. The pinout of the EEPROM in here is wrong. It's wrong with the connection of the EEPROM IC I use. I somehow have selected here the wrong type. Anyway, as I as a wired all the signal lines to a separate connector, I was actually lucky. I was lucky because I I could c connect an an additional PC board on here and rewire the address and data lines and the control signal for memory read instead of the two are uh, second PLCC socket instead of using this on board and off board. This I have done on here. So here you see the, the wrong connected PLCC socket and here is the correct connected one which I which I put on there with with wires on here and power supply and feeding on there and, and the select signal. These are three wires. I don't know if you can see this. I use a 
uh, software logic analyzer with eight channels to monitor the data lines and, uh, and, and I use my oscilloscope for verification. To write my, my EEPROM I use uh, this mini pro thing here and also to write my, the logic to my uh, GAL but it has to be a lattice one this device does not support the Atmels the ATF 16 or ATF 22 and whatever does not support those I was lucky that I found one one left or there on eBay I ordered a few again for this but they are they, they take their time coming from China as I was thinking and building this thing I I I'm writing um, a, a wiki I showed it to you for, of my MSX projects and this stuff and, and, and uh, on here with my own retro computer uh, overview what I do have and so on and I and my and here's the, the in deep analysis and trial and error with the MSX computer and on here I have also the documentation of of my Capri board I call it Capri like Capricorn I like that you know, here are the specs it's a set 80 based one it's a set 180 256k bit uh, ROM 768 RAM 20 megahertz an operating system should be CobaOS but it's not existing and I'm very far away to to get that running I think here are some screenshots of the first layout I made with the wrong footprints also for the memory I I, I missed the wrong wrong sizes the wrong size of it and on here I made a, a printout of the first layout a print I let uh, out and, and you see here that, that there is a pad but there's no pin and on here there is a pin but no pad and this complete row here is too high lo located at the footprint so, so I made it once more so I made a, a once more this thing and then I I had this layout here which I showed you in the editor and this I also gave to China to production and they sent me five of those five pieces 75 euros I paid so about 15 euros per each including taxes and it took them about one and a half weeks so this is quite fast and I think it, it also works I checked the connections and I didn't found anything what what should be wrong with it so so I don't understand why people are claiming that the Chinese friends uh, are not doing it well I cannot tell that I would say they are doing fine <coughs> on, on here is my logic for my for my gal so while the time I had to wait for the PC boards I was thinking about this one here and then the PC boards arrived actually there are 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters uh -huh. 10 or so. Mm -hmm. There are 10 centimeters, about 58 millimeters here. So, so 10 centimeters by 6 centimeters. Uh, I even managed to put the drilling holes on, mounting holes. It's cool. It's not working. And here I soldered it on my, on my desk here. And um, yeah. Due to the fact that, that, that this board is a, is a two layer board, it's easy to, to put a light source on the back side too. And then it's shining through it and you can easily verify then how the, the lines are looking like and also how the, the solder connections are done, if they are okay or if there is a short circuit or whatever. These are 0.8 millimeters pin to pin distance but it was not so actually so heavy to solder as my real-time clock 
a real-time clock is this small fellow over there this one is a this one the real-time clock here yeah, this wasn't a ha heavy one but I also cannot test if it's working so the only test so you see also how I extended my EE prom socket I outsourced my EE socket and uh, my, my EE prom socket to a separate PCB now I made a small software just an endless loop just an endless loop on here it tells uh, I cannot determine if the, the recording is sharp J just a jump command which jumps to the first address of the memory space so it's just jumping back to each to itself nothing more and as I am monitoring on here my data lines I'm expect f coming through the data lines the opcodes and, and they are coming they are coming in a regular way so this is one one zero 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 one one and, and this is the opcode C3 and this is jump and the other two cycles on here 0 0 are the addresses and then it goes back again C3 as well 1 1 0 so so I could verify with this one here with my software um, logic uh, analyzer thing this small fellow over there this one this C logic connected to the data bus where's my finger here to the, to the data bus that did it's that it's able to to read from the EEPROM now however uh, the, the this circuit runs it currently with 20 megahertz at this pin on there on this pin on there but when I measured the output of it seems that it was just 10 megahertz <laughs> and I read the manual of this thing on there of the Z180 and it says if you're not setting some specific registers it will use a clock divider at the input and and as I have just used this small jump command as on my program nothing else I would guess that, that this internal clock divider by 2 is again acting so I I'm, I'm here with 20 megahertz but internally it runs with 10 megahertz but this flag can be set programmatically the next task is is uh, to, to write a data to the memory to the memory and, and I have the problem that I cannot type in an absolute address which is in the upper space as well it's which is above um, 256k uh, as the Z80 assembler I use here yeah, some 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 assembler stuff oh. uh, Z80 assembler I use yeah, and I use also uh, an additional one. Uh, this one, the, the Win Ape. You can, yeah, that's okay. You can is uh, you you can assemble here and write the output to a file actually, no? to, to a file, and and you can then use this to put into the EEPROM. But this is not able to address more than 64 kilobyte but this is something what I haven't understood yet properly is that I would need for for, for memory write access I would need to to use the built-in memory management unit of the Z180 where I sec say on um, which 64 segment it should set a specific 8-bit value and then it would address it would turn on the specific uh, address lines 
which my address decoding depend on to select the appropriate IC EEPROM or the lower RAM with 256k or the upper RAM with 512k. Yeah. This I wanted to, to show you with, with, with you and, and I was quite happy. Uh, I used majorly this book here, this book to understand this book also writes explains how things are connected and how they are acting and so on. These are used to 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 make to make this. I don't know if it's getting sharp or not. No, I will now up upload this movie and I hope that it's now in full HD and not not in VGA as before. And uh, yeah, I will keep you informed. Yes, in you know, a half year maybe again. Also, see you. Ah, uh, and I. It's not just a book. Right? I wanna share. Uh, it's, it's not just a book. I also profited very much of other YouTubers, which showed their boards and their logic and this stuff, and I learned a lot of those. So it's a, this thing here is a kind of. I wanna give back to the YouTube community. Uh, I don't know. Last but not least, yeah. Okay. Have a nice weekend.